and welcome to Emerald Cottage. This is my place on the internet to talk about all things crochet, knitting, sewing, crafty, yarny, all those good things. Um, I'm smiling laughing to myself because I'm sitting here trying to start the video and grinning like a loon at the camera for no good reason. It just feels really weird. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else who podcasts finds this that you starting off is really uncomfortable. I think I said in my last episode, um, I don't like doing the introduction. I just, I hate this, but I don't mind it once I'm into all the chat, chat, waffle, waffle about the crochet and the knitting, but this introduction bit just feels really, oh, I don't know, awkward. So anyway, welcome. Um, I think it's episode 12, if I'm recalling correctly. Last one was 11. Um, it's Sunday, the 21st of April today. Oh, in fact, I just remember it's my friend's birthday. Um, must message her. In fact, let me put a note in my diary to do that. Two seconds. Um, what have I got for you today? So I've got three finished objects, um, lots of whips. I've got my cracking the whip segment and I've got actually very little in the way of um, acquisitions. I'm quite impressed with myself this month. So we'll get on to that in due course. Um, but yeah, let's get stuck in straight away with the um, finished objects. And the first one I want to talk about is my lovely Make-A-Wish shawl that I'm wearing. So I know I look like I'm dressed to go out to the Arctic winter and actually it is quite cold. That's what I was going to say actually. It's Sunday 21st of April and it's gone all cold again. So I'm making a temperature blanket and um, the blues are coming back out again. I was working along with lots of greens for a while there but the blues have made another appearance. So yeah, definitely getting chilly again. Although beautiful day today, absolutely gorgeous. We're planning to go for a dog walk later with, with my youngest. Um, going, 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 uh, going to go and see the bluebells. So in England at this time of year, the countryside is full of bluebells. It's beautiful. It's like a real carpet of blue everywhere. They look lovely. So we're going to go and go on a nice bluebell walk this afternoon. So anyway, to get back to what I'm wearing, my lovely Make-A-Wish shawl, which, yeah, I look like I'm going out to the Arctic wild in it because it's so cosy. Um, this was a pattern by Sylvia Whitty of Whitty Crafts Design. And it was a pattern test that I did for her. Um, so I completed the pattern test about 10 days ago, possibly. Um, and yeah, I love doing it. I'll, I'll show it to you close up. So it's this lovely spike stitch pattern. Can you see? Is it going to focus? Come on, focus. There we go, that's better. Beautiful spike stitch pattern. Um, and it's just a traditional shaped shawl. With this lovely kind of big, deep, um, deep depth <laughs> I want to say and it's got this lovely border on it look at the black border isn't it gorgeous so I'm really really pleased with this it was an absolute joy to work on um, I did block it once I was finished and it's come up with a lovely lovely soft drape it's absolutely beautiful and it's all done in Stylecraft Special DK um, apart from the red one was um, King Cole Price Wise DK in Cranberry and then the special Starcraft Special DK colours were um let me see if I can show you. So we've got um fondant, let's go up close again, that was worked better than it. Fondant, this one here is fondant, magenta, pomegranate, and proper purple. And then just black for the in-between rows and black for the edging. And the black is really effective because it makes those spikes really pop, doesn't it? I think they're beautiful. Um, so yeah, it was just a, a joy to work on this. I absolutely loved every stitch of it. It was gorgeous. Um, and I'm really pleased with the end result. It's very, very much a traditional shaped shawl. So you'd wear it like this on a chilly winter's evening. Um, or you can wear it all 
come on, focus, you silly camera. Focus, that's better. Um, or you can wear it, as I wore earlier, sort of around your neck um, in the kind of more modern style. This way, oops, this way here. And just do a bit of rearranging. And it's just, oh, it's so cozy. It's a real winter shawl. I can't wait for next winter to wear it. It's just, oh, lovely. I love it. So that's that one. That's my first finished object. A beautiful shawl. Um, right, my second finished object is my marguerite bag, which is this bag here. Isn't it pretty? Really pleased with it. I just think it's turned out beautiful. Um, that was a pattern from Miss Inside Crochet magazine, which is issue 166 of Inside Crochet. Oh, what was that noise? Weird. Um, and um, yes, this pattern is called the Marguerite Bag and it is by, let me just tell you, by Emma Wright. I don't know who she is on Instagram, if she's on Instagram, um, but Emma Wright. And this is the pattern pattern page of the magazine. Oh, can't see the bag. There we go, that's better. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty pleased with it. It's come out really well. Um, I used Drops Muscat, um, which is a nice cotton yarn. So you can see it's got lovely stitch definition. Um, beautiful colours. So I picked, I think they're called Bluebell, was it blue? No, denim, denim it was. Denim, white and sunflower. Um, and these are what the balls look like. Drops Muscat. There we go, Drops Muscat. Um, so it's like a, uh, um, it says on it, just says mercerized cotton and it advises you to use a size four mil hook or needles, um, which I did use. Now, that was the thing. I used the size four that was recommended in the pattern. Um, so yeah, a couple of things with this. I used the hook size that was recommended in the pattern and I should know by now, I'm a really tight crocheter, so I should size up a hook. I do this all the time. Everything turns out too small. So this bag, I think I measured it, measures 24 centimetres in width. The pattern suggests that it should work up at 29 centimetres in width. So five centimetres doesn't sound like a lot, but I think five centimetres all round would have given a, lot, a much better size of bag because this is a bit small. However, I still love it and I've lined it, look. Very pleased with this. I've lined it in this lovely honeycomb fabric. Do you want to see my hand stitching? Come on, focus. It's not going to focus, is it? Stupid thing. Um, but yeah, it's fully lined and it was a bit of a kind of um, experiment to line it because I had to um, first of all, I sewed a, a rectangle of fabric in half to make the main body of it. And then I just eyeballed and cut with scissors a zigzag along the top of the fabric. And then I just hemmed that and then just hand sewed it all the way around. Um, but I love it. I just think it's really nice. And it goes over my shoulder like that. So it just sits nicely on my hip. I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm so pleased with it. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention about this was the... Um, the pattern said to get two bowls of blue, one bowl of cream and one bowl of lemon. Well, well, they call it lemon, I call it sunflower. They they used wool couture cotton candy, um, but same same width of wool, same um, yardage. But yes, yeah, so they used two bowls of blue, one bowl of cream and one bowl of yellow. And I found that I definitely needed two bowls of yellow by a long way. So I used well over two bowls. Um, that was really annoying because I had to then do a separate order on Wool Warehouse. So it was the, the wool itself was quite cheap. It was £1.30 a bowl, which is very good for cotton, um, a 50 gram bowl, I should say. Um, but yeah, I had to do a special order for just one bowl at £1.30 and postage was £3.50. So that was a bit annoying that the postage was almost three times the cost of the bowl of wool. But hey ho, what do you, what do, you do? You have to finish a project, right? Ah, oh, nice slurp of tea. I'm trying to cut out sugar in my tea, so my tea's tasting a bit well at the minute. I'm trying to get used to sugarless tea. It's not too bad. I'm getting there slowly. Um, 
Um, right, so that was my second finished object. Oh, I love it so much. I'm so happy with it. Just love that yellow. It's just such a happy, happy colour. I love it. Yee. There we go. That's that one. Now, my third finished object. Gosh, got loads today. It's really good, isn't it? My third finished object. Very exciting. This is um, part of my Cracking the Whip segment, which I'll talk about later as well and my cracking the whip segment is where I take an old whip and crack it so I get it done finally and I find that having that commitment to you guys is really helping me to get these things done and out, out the way so so yeah so thanks for the, the accountability factor so this one was made using this heart and soul sock yarn which is by Sardar um, I don't actually like this yarn <laughs> I've no idea why I bought it <laughs> I don't have no idea when I bought it um, I don't like the colors I don't like the feel of it it was very much uh, let's make my first pair of socks I do some old scruffy yarn and see how it goes so I've got my first pair of socks look two socks so happy with these I just can't believe that I've actually made a pair of socks so what can I tell you about these they are made with the pattern by Christine Perry, who is Winnick Mum, oh, reflective, um, who's written this Super Socks book. And it's a great book full of photographs. I'll just show you on page. Full of photographs to help you make your first pair of socks. Really recommended. Super Socks by Christine Perry, who's also known as Winnick Mum. Um, and Christine did a sock along. Um, Oh gosh, this was, I'm trying to think what year it was. When was this published, does it say? 2016, it says this was published. So that's what, eight years ago. Um, and um, she did a sock along on her blog where one week she did the cuff, one week she did the main body, one week she did the heel and so on and so forth. Um, and then she produced this book. This was the pattern, for, pattern format just printed out like this that's the picture um and um it's a free pattern which is great the book's not free obviously you've got to pay for the book um the book was is there a price on it i'm guessing it was probably about like 8.99 something like that can't actually remember i got it for my birthday last year um but yes great book really helpful takes you all through um using short circuit short circular is that what you call it short circular let me just get mine and i'll show you what i mean so one of these um so i use one called sock wonder sock and wonder by addy so one of these there's no way it's going to focus on that it's like a really small loop um it's got one mine's got one side longer than the other which not exactly sure why it's got that but it seems to work anyway um so christine's book takes what you all through using a short circular or a, what they call a magic loop which i know nothing about so i'm not going to pretend to uh, and also the dreaded dpns which you do need to do the toes and the the cuff cuff do you do it for the cuff i think you do don't you do you See, I can't remember. I had these socks that long. So I started these years ago, then gave up, and then restarted them last year. So you, if you look back at some of my old episodes, you'll see me talk about them in some of my really old episodes. Um, the one worrying thing was I put them on yesterday and something went snap. I'm like, oh my God, I've broken my socks. So you can see just there. Is it gonna focus? on focus now well can you you can roughly see there's like a dip just there if you can see that where um basically yeah the very top edge one of the stitches has actually snapped <laughs> so that's not great you can also see a hole there just there so i think i failed to pick up a stitch um on this one, something goes very wrong around about here. My decreases kind of, I think I miscounted the stitches and had to wing it for a bit. 
but that in itself is a skill I think you'll find so quite pleased with that and my toes are really nothing to write home about I did kitchener toes and I hate doing that I've decided I don't like it at all so I need to find another way of doing toes so if anybody else has got a, a recommended way for doing toes let me know but yes pair of socks really happy with these um what else can I tell you about them I'm trying to think oh yeah I'm quite pleased that they're um they're twins look they're almost identical how good is that I'm so happy even down to the toes they're just almost identical so yeah really pleased and that's my third finished object which brings me on to cracking the whip so my cracking the whip project for next time I don't think I'll get finished but I'll give it a go is this shawl which was my trillium shawl and don't ask me who it's by because I can't remember because I can't remember where the pattern is but I made this last year and it's too small so it's this lovely kind of um, puff stitch pattern it's really squidgy um, and it's yeah you can see it's tiny and if I try and wear it this way it doesn't really come round long enough to actually stay on your neck you'd have to kind of almost pin it underneath and practically choke yourself to death to wear it so that's no good it's lovely though beautiful um drape on it and it's this uh superba sky wave super wash four ply by rico design oh there we go um and the color is got a color number 003 which i think what was it what was it called there was a name for it online, I can't remember now. So I bought this yarn in Germany, uh, the Christmas before last. I went with my friend, went to the Christmas market in Stuttgart, had a great time. It was a really, really, really lovely weekend. It had snowed, it was all pretty. We had Glühwein, we had Liebenkuchen, or whatever they're called, those German ginger chocolate biscuits, amazing. Um, I stayed in a really nice hotel. It was just a lovely, lovely weekend. And I bought myself a ball of this to kind of commemorate the weekend because we wanted to find a, a craft shop, which obviously we had to find a craft shop when we were there. She's a crochet as well. So I bought this and came home and then at some point last year I made this Trillium shawl with it. Um, but it's too small. So I was a bit, bit in a panic because I bought it in Germany and I thought, oh God, what happens if I can't get it anywhere else? But of course it's Rico design, you can get it on the internet, no problem at all. So I bought myself another ball of it, um, but I need to kind of just pick it up again and actually work on it. So I have blocked it. I have woven in all my ends. Don't know what that means for continuing to work on it, if that'll be a problem or not. Um, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. So that's my Cracking the Whip project for next time. So I'm not going to commit to having it finished, but I am going to commit to working on it considerably and having a, a good go at it anyway. So yeah, so that's my Trillium shawl. Like I said, I can't remember who the pattern's by, so I'll need to look that up at some point. So that's Cracking the Whip. Um, what else can I tell you about? My current whips are many, <laughs> but quite exciting, I think, anyway. So let's go in order of how close they are to me. So first up is my virus shawl which is growing really nicely. I was away in Northern Ireland last weekend visiting my mum for about four days. And I always take my crochet with me because we sit and chat and I can get loads done, it's great. Um, my mum can't walk very far. She's got a bit of a dodgy leg. She's she's 84 and she's in great health. She's really, really not, you know, not losing it upstairs at all. She's um, really with it. She's very independent. She still lives on her own but she can't walk very far, so it makes going out quite limited. She can get around the garden centre with a trolley, but that's about it. So we tend to sit in quite a lot and just watch TV together. Um, so this is perfect opportunity to get lots of crochet done. So I took this virus shawl with me to Northern Ireland, um, and it's coming along really well. Have a look. Whoops. Look at that. Ooh, hello, I can see you through the, through the holes. Um, it's growing really nicely. I'm really chuffed with it really pleased I think it's really pretty I love these colors I hope you can still hear me by the way um, and the virus shawl is well 
it's nobody seems to know who the pattern's by. I re I did read somewhere that it's a vintage pattern, so I don't know what that means. I don't know how old something has to be to be vintage. Does it have to be like twenty years old, something like that? So I know that this pattern is at least about ten years old. Uh, because there was a big craze for it about 10 years ago. Although I thought that was when it had been written. So whether or not it was just rediscovered at that point by somebody else, I don't know. Um, so I don't know who it's by, so I don't know who to give the credit to, but it's a lovely pattern, very easy to remember. It's groups, a free pattern. It's groups of um, 10, one row you do uh, 10 chains, the next row you do 10 trebles, then you do 10 trebles again, then you do 10 treble, chain, treble, chain, and then you do some loops to make the ten, loop of 10 again, and so on and so forth. So you kind of build it up from loops, from a loop to 10 crochets, 10 triple crochets, oh, 10 loops, 10 triple crochets, 10 triple crochets, 10 triple crochets, one chain space, and repeat. So it's a four row repeat. And it's, yeah, really, really easy once you get it in your head. And I've found that I've made very few mistakes touch wood so far I've had to only rip it back once um, so I'm quite pleased with that as well and it's made of this um, yarn smiths pebble haze print DK which I got from wool warehouse I don't know if wool warehouse are the only place that do this I'm not sure um, but it's yarn smiths um, and it's pebble haze prints so that there is a pebble haze range as well which is more solids but this one is this kind of like lovely um, variegated and it's called the colour is called saltburn um so yeah it's lovely and it's a kind of um it's like a sort of woven yarn i've had this discussion with you before it's like it's already been knitted up it's like a mesh it's not plied if that makes sense so if anybody knows what that's called let me know i'd be interested to know so it's i, I don't think it's going to show up on the screen is it no, it's not going to. It's um yeah, it's kinda of like a it's already it's already been worked up into a, a sort of tube almost. Um but it's lovely and soft, it's very, very soft and fluffy and I love it. Oh, I just love it. What is it about the yarn that is just so <sighs> does anybody else feel like that? I just want to go <sighs> it's just lovely. It's so soft and squishy and I just want to cuddle it and lie in a bed of it and I'd be happy. It's lovely. Anyway, and I'm using a size five hook for this, five millimeter hook. So that's my virus shawl. I feel like I'm just going blah, 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 today. So sorry if it's a bit rushed. Virus shawl. Then we've got um, my new whip, which I just started yesterday. Um, and it is my three springs shawl by Diane Ramsey of Addy Day Designs. So this is the pattern here. So you can see it's quite a wide, uh, shallow shawl, shallow shawl. Um, and I've just started it. So it's looking like this. <laughs> it's quite small at the minute. Eee. But look at the color, isn't it glorious? Love it. So the yarn I'm using is botanical yarn. Come on. Focus. There we go, botanical yarn. And um, I bought it at, I want to say, the Stitch Festival. I've got a really bad habit of not writing down where I bought yarn. Must rectify that, so I must start and write on the label where I bought it because it really bugs me that I can't remember. Can't remember what I had for breakfast most days, let alone where I bought some yarn. Um, but anyway, I bought two skeins of it. Well, two and a bit. So the, this, the first skein came as a skein on its own, which I wound yesterday. Oh my God, I got into such an argument with my wool winder. So I don't know what happened, but it wound really wonky and got all kind of tangled underneath. And then I couldn't get it off the thing that the wool winder the, the spoke thing and then it all fell apart and it all tangled up so what should have taken me maybe five minutes took me over an hour to detangle <laughs> it's not fun that was very frustrating let me tell you um however it's all nice and balled up now and i'm not going to use that wool winder for a while um so i bought um two big skeins of it 
um, and this one came with a mustard sort of mini. Um, now they're not actually the same colourway, so this one is called Quality Street Purple Sock Set, and then this one was called Allium Purple Sensation, but I think they're close enough to be the same. I'm happy with that. I did think about maybe I should alternate alternate skeins each row but row but can't really be bothered <laughs> so I'm not going to I'm just going to hope for the best I'm sure it'll be fine um so yeah so I'm using a four and a half millimeter hook although there's some part of the pattern where you move up to a five mil hook um so far the pattern is really easy it's nice straightforward it's quite um easy to remember and I'm really enjoying it just started it last night beautiful yarn to work with it's lovely it's very soft um, it's just their four ply superwash, 75 merino, 25% nylon, um, and it comes in. This ball was 100 grams. This one actually was 120 grams, which works out quite well because the pattern calls for two times 100 grams plus. Um, you can see these pale pink stripes. They require 25 gram mini and the hot pink edging requires 25 gram mini so i'm not going to do these other stripes i'm just going to keep it all min color until i get to the very edge so that means i needed i needed 220 grams of um yarn to get from the start to this edge and i've got 220 grams so that works quite well quite pleased about that right let's just put this oh this is living in my bag that i made look where do you see this Look at this lovely bag. Look at that. What do you think? Isn't it gorgeous? Red's my favourite colour, by the way. Um, this was a bag that I made in a sewing course last year. I, I can sew and I do sew. I'm just not very good. So I thought I'd go on a course to kind of help me improve. And I suppose it helped a bit, maybe improve my confidence. Um, so I've also made this pencil case. That was a zippered pouch. Very pleased with that. And I also made a little tissue holder. Just got a little snap fastener. Pretty pleased with that. Although the snap fastener is very tough to open and close. It's very um very secure that. And the bag itself, which is just uh oh it's got an inside pocket. Fancy inside pocket and everything, look. There we go. Um, so yes, yeah, so my um, three spring shawl is living in there for the moment. Just put all the bits back in and get rid of that one. Then my next whip is, oh, this is a fun one. So did I talk about this last time? I can't remember. It's my emotional support chicken. I can't remember if I've talked about it before. Let's pretend I haven't and I'll start from, start from scratch with it. So I have seen um, various places over the internet where people have been knitting um, emotional support chickens because why not? So the pattern is by um, the knitting tree and it says on it, life is hard, we all need a chicken to help make it better. Emotional support chicken by the knitting tree. And that's the picture of it there. There we go, look at that chick chick chicken. Oh, it's so cute. So you work it in one flat piece and then, well, more or less one flat piece and then hem it. And look at this, it's, it's knitting, it's knitting, it's knitting. And it's shaped. Very pleased with that. Look at that lovely shaping. So that's the kind of tail end, if you like. If you imagine that, sort of, oh, hang on, let's get the right around. Well, it doesn't really matter which round it is, I don't think. So hold it like that, and then you would fold this bit down so that these side bits meet. It's really hard to do when it's on a knitting needle. And then that becomes the back end of the chicken. So as can you see here? No, you can't. Um, but it's very easy. It's all knitting. There's no purling. And I have learnt how to do a wrap and turn and an SSK um, and I think everything else I was able to do already I'm just not very confident and I'm terrified of making mistakes when it comes to knitting because 
Picking up stitches is so hard. Why is it so hard? Is it just me? Do experienced knitters get worried about pulling out um, knitting, pulling out stitches, or do they just rip away with gay abandon? I'd be really interested to know what experienced knitters do because it fills me with horror. In fact, when I was doing these yesterday, um, at one point towards the toes, I was, I think I was in the last round before I started doing the Kitchener stitch for the toes and um, I was using DPNs and all of a sudden, I don't know what I did, but my, my stitches shot off the end of my DPN and I lost about 10 stitches. Oh my God, that was a nightmare. It was so stressful trying to pick those up. I did manage to get them picked up and I don't think there's any kind of really glaringly obvious mistakes. So it's really the toe anyway, but it was a bit hair raising. I don't like it. I don't like it. So yeah, experienced knitters, do you like it? What, what do you feel about losing stitches? Interested to know. So yes, my emotional support chicken's coming along rather well. I'm just doing a little bit each day because I'm finding that each, um, it's quite an overwhelming, I'm finding it quite an overwhelming pattern. Um, there's a lot to it. Although it, if you just slow down and take it one step at a time, it's actually quite easy. Um, but when I look at it, I go, oh my God, I can't do that. But I'm just doing it slowly, 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 and it's working out quite well. But yeah, I look, I look ahead to the next bit and go, oh my God, it's so difficult. But it's not. Just need to slow down, Jill, and just take your time, breathe, and work on it gradually. And that's what I'm doing. So I'm working on it in this massive bowl of wool. <laughs> Love this. This is my Women's Institute Soft and Smooth um, Aran Weight Yarn exclusive to Hobbycraft. I don't even know Hobbycraft do this anymore. I bought this, let's see, show me the label. There we go. I bought this, um, oh my goodness, about 10 years ago, just because I liked the size of the ball. <laughs> no other reason than that. Um, a bit of an impulse buy, shall we say. So I thought it'd be quite good for this chicken. And I'm just working the stripe detail in this other one which is also a massive bowl um so it's it's using up quite a lot of space in my project bag which is this hayfield bonus aran which isn't soft at all it's quite scratchy i um, don't really like it and i wouldn't wear i wouldn't make something to wear out of this oh, i think i made a hat didn't i um but i wouldn't wear something that's like next to my skin because it's too scratchy so hayfield bonus aran and they're living in my lovely bag which oh, i can't remember who made this i'm rubbish at this kind of thing sorry i know lots of YouTubers are really good at saying who made their bags, but I'm terrible. Um, but it's this lovely fabric here, which is very retro. Um, and I bought it because I used to have a bedspread like this on my bed when I was little. And it just took me back to my bedspread. Um, but it's a lovely bag. And I've got that, uh, I do remember where I bought that. It was uh, at a wool show called Wool at Junction 13. No, I don't remember actually. It wasn't Wool at Junction 13. It was at a wool show in Coventry, I want to say. Anybody know what that is? That was a couple of years ago. Um, but yeah, I do remember buying it. So that's my emotional support chicken. Let's just put the pattern away as well. Bear with. Right, that's that one. Um, what else have I got? And I think the last one I've got to show you really, is it the last one? Yeah, the last one is my lacy scarf, which I don't know if I've worked on it since my last podcast. Maybe a little bit. I certainly haven't worked on it in the last couple of weeks. Um, but as you can see, it's growing quite nicely. It's getting quite long now. Well, I say quite long. I'm about, I'm about a sixth of the way there. Um, but yeah, it's um, working out really nicely. And this is definitely quite advanced knitting for me. Um, and again, it was quite a scary pattern. However, it is a two row repeat and one of the rows is just purl the whole way across. So it's quite easy from that point of view. Um, and yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm knitting it with um, this Mila Colori yarn by a company called Lang Yarns, Mila Colori Baby. Um, and it's this lovely kind of just look at all those colours, it's really lovely. Love it. 
and this was a kit that my friend gave me for Christmas um, because I wanted to knit, knit, I wanted to knit a scarf. And we went to a wool show together and we saw this one at the wool show and she said she'd buy me it for Christmas, which she did, which was very nice of her. So that's my lace scarf. I think that's everything I've got to show you. Oh yeah, incoming goodies. Well, all I've got, which I haven't even got here because it's in the other room. Oh, in fact, I'll go and get it once. Um, right. This is also a whip, which I'll show you in a second, but my one kind of acquisition this year, this year, yeah, if only that was true, my one acquisition this time was these two bowls of parchment by Starcraft Special DK, which is very boring, isn't it? But I needed them for my temperature blanket, which is coming along really well. So this is April so far. Get the April the right way round. I've moved on to this lovely dark green now. Can you see that dark green, which is Cypress? This one here, which is, I want to say, 14 to 18 degrees C, I think. So if you don't know, this is my temperature blanket, which is one square for each day. And on each square, the first round color represents the low temperature for that day. And the second round color represents the high temperature for that day. And then I'm just doing the third round in parchment. So I'm getting through quite a lot of parchment. Um, that's April last week and the week before. And that's this week so far. Bit of a changeable week, you can see from the different colors in it. It's been very cold again, so hence we've got this blue, um, which is, I think that was one degree to four degrees, so the mornings have been very cold this week. Um, and then this was my January to March section, which I've joined together now. Um, here we are, so it's like a big long strip. So I'm basically going to have three strips like this. You can't see, can you? Oh, there we go, January. February, March. And I've also sewn on these buttons. Which, oh, come on. There we go. Oh, it really doesn't like that, does it? <laughs> um, the buttons were from, let me just tell you, Rich deco rich design on instagram and they come in this little bag and there's like a little set of buttons for every month um how can i show you these oh it's not very good is it there's basically a button for every month and there's one for the whole year as well which is that one there Let me just put those back in the bag before I lose them. Oh, for goodness sake, go in. Oh no, dropping them. Um, right, let me just show you this bigger one then. Come on. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh, <laughs> oh this camera autofocus is dreadful. There, you see, 2024, little heart. Oh, isn't that sweet? And then it's got little buttonholes at either end to sew on with. Um, so yeah, so they're very cute. Um, and I've sewn on my January, February and March ones because they are complete. So that's my temperature blanket. So it's coming along really well. Really happy with that. The only problem is it's going to be wider than it is long, which I realized. So each, um, each month is seven squares across because it's seven days in a week which means that three months is 21 squares across so that's january february march 21 squares across each month is five squares down because it's up to nearly five weeks in each month or more than four weeks i should say in each month um and it's going to be three months deep which is going to be three times five which is which is 15 is that right? 15, one, two, no, four times five, which is 20. So it's 21 across and 20 deep. So it's actually wider than it is long. Um, but it doesn't matter, does it? It's only a blanket. No one's gonna look at it and go, well, you've done that wrong, are they? They're gonna look at it and go, oh, I love your blanket. I hope, anyway. Um, so yeah, so on that note, I shall wrap this up. Um, 
it's such a beautiful day today. I think we're going to go on this dog walk to see the bluebells. Um, and then what else have I got planned for this week? Um, not a lot, actually, I don't think. I wonder what my diary says. I don't know where my phone is, so I can't check my diary. Oh, there it is. Let's see what we've got coming up this week. That's exciting. So we have got... Um, Oh, doctor appointment tomorrow, how exciting. Oh, tennis, I'm back to playing tennis on Tuesday. And then my book club's meeting on Tuesday. If you're, in, if you're interested in me talking about what books we're reading at the book club, let me know. Um, and I've just got a couple of gym sessions booked in. Oh, coffee with a friend, that'll be nice on Thursday morning. That'll be lovely, a friend I haven't seen for ages. Um, and oh, a pedicure on Friday the 26th, so that's nice. So yeah, so quite a nice week booked in and a couple of walks planned for next weekend so um yes all good stuff so with that i shall bid you goodbye thank you so much for watching if you're new please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and thanks for watching me if you're not new if you're old <laughs> thanks for coming back it's a pleasure to see you i hope you enjoyed this episode and i will see you again really soon bye